Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. And we thank you because you want to impact us and you want to help us and take us to that height you've planned for our life. And we pray as we encourage one another, challenge one another, I pray you minister to us. You will help us to regain our vision and also to dream again and to get to the heights you've planned for us. Thank you, Father, because you've answered. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. I will be talking about dare to dream again. I would like, I'm a teacher, and I like to always have response from my audience when I teach. So I would like us to chorus it together. Dare to dream again. Dare to dream again. Yes. If you look from creation, we can go back to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. I like that part. It says, Subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God created us to dream big. He did his own part by creating the world, putting everything there. And he created us to take it further, to be part of people creating things. And so as children of God, we had to dream big. We had to participate in the process, and in this act of creating, innovating, inventing, and improving lives. Let's look at Psalm 37, verse 4. It says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and it shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now, when we talk about dream, what are we talking about? What are dreams? It's all about envisaging a future you desire. In that Psalm 37 verse 4, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and it shall give thee the desires of thine heart. If you don't have any desire, what is the Lord going to give you? So when we're talking about dreams, it's about envisaging the future you desire. And if you look at the, the letters of the word dream, we can look at it one by one. D, you are desiring something what are your desires that's the question to us this morning what do you desire number two how reflection beyond the present you, you can't be dreaming about a reality or something is a reality it is done already a dream is about things that is beyond the present reflection beyond the present what are your reflections beyond the present he the envisioned future what is the future you are envisioning? So when we talk about dream, of course, naturally we sleep and we dream. But we are talking about dream in terms of goals and vision now. So what is the vision future you have? A, aspiration and ambition. What are your aspirations? What are your ambition? What do you want to become? What are you striving to achieve? And him, mental image of something great or ideal you want to achieve. And that's what we mean by dream. Dreaming, desiring, reflecting beyond the present, envisioning and striving for a better future, aspiring, setting goals, things you want to achieve, forming a mental image of it. Because if you cannot see the picture at times, it's it becomes a bit difficult for you to strive towards it. You want to see the picture. You have a mental image of something great or idea you want to achieve. And when you see the picture, it's set before you. You begin to pursue it to get there. I pray the Lord will help us. We'll be able to fulfill our dreams in Jesus' name. So, why do people stop dreaming? Because if you are saying there to dream again, that means maybe one way or the other, you were dreaming before and you stopped dreaming. It's possible, it happens, that people stop dreaming. There are several examples. 
people stop dreaming. So why? That could be disillusionment. You've dreamt before. You had great vision. You wanted to do something great. You started out and pursuing something, and failure came. You felt, well, all this thing they are saying, maybe it's not for me. Through fear of failure, you are afraid of failing. What if it doesn't work out? What if I tried and I failed? That could be one of the reasons why people stop dreaming. Negative influences all around you. You are surrounded by people that are not having dreams. And so you think that you also you should be like them. I remember I found the Lord told us something at the time, told us about having an eaglet, that an eaglet was put among uh, chickens. So all the eaglet, eaglet could think about is to be picking things on the floor, never knowing that it has, it has the strength to fly, to fly and soar high. So negative influences could also stop people from dreaming. The limited beliefs, maybe because of your past experiences, you feel that I cannot go beyond this level, and so you limit yourself. Limited beliefs could be part of reasons why people stop dreaming. Lack of motivation. Whether motivation from within or from without. Lack of motivation could be one of the reasons why people stop dreaming. Shifting priorities. Oh, you've gotten to a certain point in life and feel like, no, it's no longer, at this age, I don't need to dream again. At this age, I think I just have to just manage until I, I, I hand my raise. No. Shifting priorities. Contentment with the status quo. External pressures. Loss of passion. I will consider some of these points and expatiate on them. So talking about the solution meant, Life experiences or setbacks or repeated failures can lead to a sense of delusionment or loss of hope. I've met people that will tell you the stories, what happened. I've tried this, I've tried that, and I don't think this is meant for me. As a teacher, I remember some of my students on campus who think they cannot master something. Let me give you an example, like programming. And so, spending four or five years, master this, this is what I've come to learn. You think this is not for me. But you know, after finishing school and they're looking for a job, they're not able to get the job. They go back to enroll in a programming school to learn. Or they came to the university to study, and because of whatever reason, thinking they could not achieve it. Now when reality of life came and they discovered that they could not get a job, they go back to enroll and learn, and eventually some of them make it and they are able to do it. Why were they not able to do it before? Not because they could not do it, but because they felt that, I've tried, I'm not getting it, so maybe it's not for me. So, lack of life experiences, setbacks, repeated failures can lead to a sense of disillusionment, disillusionment or loss of hope. When people encounter obstacles and challenges, they may start to doubt their ability to achieve great things, which can dampen their dreams. Of course, challenges will come, but that should not dampen you. I remember two days ago when a forum discussing about the Nigerian Startup Act, and a woman said that she started a company. First time she failed, second time she failed, third time she failed, and the fourth time she started making progress. And that fourth time was about seven and a half years ago. And she's recon somebody recognized today doing well in that business. What? When she did it the first time, she failed. The second time she failed, the third time she has said, that, no, this is the end. I don't think this, is, this will work for me. That will have been the end of the story. We will not be reading about her today or hearing about her. Negative influences. Surrounding oneself with negative or unsupportive people can hinder one's ability to dream again. Who are your companions? What do you listen to? Especially youth on social media. What are the stories, the videos you watch? What are they teaching you? What are you learning from them? The movies you watch, what are you learning from such movies? Surrounding oneself with negative or unsupportive people can hinder one's ability to dream again. Also, constant criticism or lack of encouragement from others may lead individuals to adopt a more pessimistic outlook on their aspirations. 
It can happen from anywhere. It could be in your school. When people start telling you, you don't know anything. And as you are hearing every time, criticism, people telling you don't know this. Or maybe you do something, you fail, and you begin to, even your parents at times, it happens at home. They will tell you, they say some things, and that can begin to form your thought. Begin to impress, that begin to come to your mind that maybe I cannot do this. Everybody is saying that I cannot do it. Constant criticism or lack of encouragement from others may lead individuals to adopt a more pessimistic outlook on their aspirations. I mentioned earlier limiting beliefs. Deep-rooted limiting beliefs about oneself and one's capabilities can hold individuals back from dreaming about great things. When one feels stuck or lacks the drive to pursue one's goal, one might lose interest in dreaming about great things altogether. It happens. We are not, but vision looks up. Vision looks up. And that is why we, are here, why we are here today. To look up. To look up. To dream. When I read the passage in, the, in Genesis, I, God tells us that we should subdue the hearts. Several resources are created. When God created the world, there was no aeroplane. If men did not subdue the heart, they would not have created the aeroplane. When God created the world, there was no car. If men did not subdue the heart and use what God has given to them and dream of things, we would not be having cars today. And so God has given it to us to subdue the heart. To subdue the heart. So, how do we start to dream again. If you can show the slide, please. There I have, in the slide, I have some images that are having like four steps. You have to begin to think. Begin to aspire. Begin to reflect the kind of future, the kind of things you want to achieve. Now, the problem is not about reflecting. Many people have reflected. Many people have dreamt. What happened is between the dream and the realization, materialization of it, that's where the problem comes. And so, it's like you are now dreaming and you are in step two. You can see that vision. You can see that goal. You can see that beautiful image, like I said earlier, mental image of what you want to achieve. But there's a ladder between you and that image. There is a ladder, and there are steps to follow. And you have to be consistent. Some, they'll take step one and step two, and they come down. And that's where it stops. Some will fall several times, but they'll continue to climb and climb again. And eventually, they get to the top. And eventually, they look at the list of their dreams, things they've written down, and they can see ticked, 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 and ticked. So it takes a process. It takes a journey to dream again and to get the dreams achieved. So how do you start to dream again? Define your goals. Define your goals. Visualize success. You have to be able to have a mental image of what it means to succeed. Visualize it. Then you create a plan. So you can dream, you can visualize it, but I told you between the goal, the dream, and that point where you are checking the list, there is a ladder. There are steps to take. So you create a plan. You develop positive habits. You may create a plan, and you try to follow the plan, and eventually you think, no, 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 this is too stressful. I need to stop this. You develop positive habits. You stay persistent. You are persistent about it. You keep doing it. You surround yourself with positivity. There are so many negativity all around us today. Bad news here and there. Bad examples, especially young people you keep hearing. You know, people doing all those kind of money rituals. Are they young? I mean, looking for money at all costs. And you hear a lot of things around. But what you need to do is to surround yourself with positivity. Continuous learning. 
You know, they've told us what you learn today, after six months or one year, what you are learning may be outdated. You are in the university, studying a course four years. Before you graduate, what you are studying may no longer be relevant. Yes. So, you need to continuously learn. Take calculated risk. Many of the people that have achieved great things, they take risk, a lot of risk. But be careful, not just taking risk anyhow, calculated risk. You can't do great things without taking risk, or taking some risk. You have to dare to do some things. Stay adaptable. Practice gratitude. Let me explain some of these points. When I say define your goals and visualize your success, what am I saying? Clearly articulate what you want to achieve and write them down. It's better to write them down. Clearly articulate what you want to achieve and write them down. Make your goals specific. We've been taught about smart goals. Make your goals specific, measurable. I remember a professor of mine told us, whatever you cannot measure, you cannot improve. Whatever you cannot measure, you cannot improve. Measurement helps you to be able to improve on something. When it's at stage one, then you are thinking of how to take it to stage two. So make your goal specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. At the same time, you have to be ambitious. Because if every time you are just looking at it, okay, this, only thing, this is what I can achieve, and you don't dream beyond what you have the ability to do, you may, make, you may be able to achieve what you plan to achieve, but you may not do great things. So at times you have to be ambitious and kind of let that show in some of the goals you are defining. I remember at the time there was an exam I wanted to write, a professional exam. Of course, I look at the domain, I feel confident about the domain, but I just told myself, this exam is 100, 100 I want to get. I want to surpass whatever record they have, and I want to get 100 by 100. And it's a very tough exam. So I prepared. But because I've said it that I'm going to get 100, I didn't get 100. I got 91 or 92, I can remember. 91, 92. But what I could gather from that was because I set in my mind, I deci decided, I determined, yeah, that I'm going to get under 100, I was close to 100. If I said, I just if I said in my heart that I just wanted, and hey, 70 is fine, just 70 is fine. Maybe I've landed in 55. So at times, aim higher beyond what you can do and be a bit ambitious, but not over ambitious. I remember my secondary school days, this quote, when we were at the assembly, the principal would tell us to repeat some quotes, and those things helped us. He said, be ambitious. He who aims at the sky shoots higher than he who aims at the roof. If you aim at the roof, you may not go beyond this level, but if you aim at the sky, you eventually go above the roof. Take time each day to visualize yourself achieving your goals and living the life you desire. And it's wise. says, dare to dream, then decide to do. It's not sufficient to dream. You need to decide to do. Create a plan and develop positive habits. Break down your big goals into smaller, manageable steps. You break it down. What are the steps or the sub-goals? And how do I achieve them? In organizations, when you are planning for the year, you come up with objectives. You come up with action plans. You come up with indicators. How do we, what, what are the objectives we have? What are the plans, the action plans to achieve it? The indicators, what tells us that we're achieving it? What does success mean? How do you know that you succeed? Break down your goals in smaller and manageable steps. Create a detailed action plan to work towards your objectives. Regularly review and update your plan as needed. You review it. It's not a problem to fail. The real problem is failing to rise when you fail. That's the real problem. Many people that have done great things and are still doing great things, they have failed several. If you ask them, they'll tell you several. I've told you about a woman that started a company 
three times she failed. Eventually, the fourth time, she began to make it. So it's not about failing that's a problem. So at times, you need to review and update your plan as needed. Cultivate habits that support your goals. Develop good habits. Habits that support your goals. Learning new skills, networking, meeting with the right set of people. Cultivate habits that support your goals. Stay persistent and commit to lifelong learning. We need to be committed to your vision, to your dream. Of course, there will be obstacles, but don't let that discourage you. Don't let that discourage you. There will be obstacles. In fact, there are times that so many things will happen that you just think that it's like, this is not for me. I can tell you that when you are at that stage, that's a breakthrough ahead. That is the reason. At that stage where it's like everything is working against you, there's a breakthrough close by. And that's the point you need to encourage yourself and to put in more effort and move forward. Learn from failures and keep moving forward. Failure is not a problem. It's just that you are learning why you should not do things. In my own profession, we write proposals to get research grants to do some research. I read something recently. A woman said that most of the proposals written, at times just about 3% of them get funded. So you have written several proposals seeking for funds to do research, and most often maybe 3% or less than 5% will get funded. So if you look at it, if you are, that means if you are writing 100 proposals, 5% of 100 proposals what? That's five. So if after writing the first one, the first one was not funded and was discouraged, wrote the second one and stopped. So if you look at it averagely, it means that it is one out of 20 proposals the person has written that got funded. So failing first time, failing second time, stopping means that's the end. But failure means you learn what did you do wrong and how can you improve and you keep pushing. Spend time with people who uplift and support you. Keep learning and growing. Seek knowledge and expertise in areas related to your goals. We have to do a lot of learning, especially in this generation. Knowledge is increasing. Things are changing fast. About two or three years ago, I was invited to a, I mean, kind of a forum to discuss, and I told the developers, software developers there, I said, very soon, machine will be writing software for you. So if you're a programmer, and all your focus is about coding, you need to go beyond that. Because very soon, you have machines that will be writing the code for you. One of them was there, thinking, no, oh, it's not possible. I can, we are not yet there. We are not there yet. Last year, ChatGPT came up, came out, OpenAI, and the machine is now writing code. If you tell the machine, I want a software that can do this, that can do that, can do that, it can start writing the code for you. So keep learning and growing. Things are changing fast, especially in this generation. Seek knowledge and expertise in areas related to your goals. Education and self-improvement are crucial for achieving greatness. I love this quote by Harry Longfellow. And like I said, while I was in secondary school, I learned this through our principal then. The heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. There's no other secret. You can't be lazy and expect to do great things. It's not possible. Heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight. They don't just jump at it and it happens. No. But they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward in the night. What do you do with your time? Aldolf Monod said, Between the great things we cannot do and the small things we will not do, the danger is that we shall do nothing. Oh, this one is too big for me. I cannot do it. This one is too small. I need something better. What happens? You do nothing. Some are looking for a job. Oh, no, no, no. I want a big job. Oh, this job is too much. This uh, advert, I don't think I, I, I can 
qualify for this, so I don't need to ap apply. Oh, this job is too small. This one, I can't go for this. I'm a graduate. Eventually, it stays there, doing nothing. Between the great things we cannot do and the small things we will not do, danger is that we shall do nothing. Be open to adjusting your approach if needed. Circumstances may change. And being flexible can help you navigate through unexpected challenges. As you dream, be flexible as well. You need to adapt, yes, but don't lose focus of what your dream is. Now, there's another important thing that can help you when you are dreaming. Appreciate little success. Practice gratitude. God has helped you to achieve one small thing. Thank God for him. Appreciate it and speak about it. Speak about it. Share the testimony. Talk to people about it. Be grateful for what you have, you have and the progress you make along the way. Gratitude can improve your overall well-being and keep you motivated to pursue your dreams. I remember any time I want to collaborate with people to do things, I'll tell them, let's look for the low-hanging fruits. Because the little results you get first motivate you to do more. Then you work and work and work, there's no results. And you begin to think, is there a light? Is there a path in this direction? So when you achieve some little things, be, be grateful. And that helps you, gives you that encouragement to do more. Staff your distractions and feed your focus. Several trains distract us today. Staff those distractions. Don't feed on them. Don't spend time on those distractions. Feed your focus. We'll conclude soon by just looking at some examples of successful dreamers. Some people that dreamt and they succeeded. I'll look at some from the Bible and also from my own time. David. I like the life of David. He had his own mistakes, but the fact that he doesn't allow failure to stop him. He doesn't allow obstacles to stop him. In the Psalms, he will say, the enemy had this, the enemy had that. At the end of the day, he say, Lord, I trust in you. That is it. Obstacles are there, Lord, I trust in you. I look forward for greater things. And if you look at the record, I like this verse about David. He said, David, he said he was cunning in playing and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. He combined everything together. Talent, uh, practicing and making himself very skillful, nice person, comely, and also the Lord is with him. That is a factor you cannot remove. As you are dreaming, don't remove the Lord. Let that phrase, the Lord is with him, let it be also said about you, that the Lord is with you. And that gives you greater success. I wonder what we saw about him when they attacked Sigla, Ziklag. And they've taken everything away. His wife, the, the, the children, everybody. Everybody was discouraged. In fact, people were thinking of stoning him. But the Bible said that he encouraged himself. And he was able to think, let me go to the Lord and ask for direction. So, like I said, there are reasons why you may want to stop dreaming. But like David, encourage yourself and ask, go to the Lord again and ask for direction. And you start dreaming again. Jabez. I love the story. Not so much was said about him, but the feel, the little thing written about him was very deep. You may think that what is dreaming about Jabez, when somebody realizes that my life is not where it's supposed to be, that's the beginning of dreaming. So you realize that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Something is wrong with me. Oh, my parents called me this. And that's the reason. He did not stop and say, yes, I know it. Since my parents said this, well, that is why, so let me, it's, it's fate. That's, that is what I've, I was born to be. No. He went to God and changed the story. 
Jabez went beyond being honorable. He was more honorable. Not just honorable, more honorable. What about Uzziah? I like inventions. I like people that are creating things. And so when I saw this verse in the scripture, I loved it. He said, and he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously ebbed till he was strong. He invented things. And today, we should be the one inventing. We should not leave it to the unbelievers. We should be the one creating new things. Because when we create new things, we create it for good use. Not for a negative use. Because the fear of God is for everything else. So we should not leave all the inventions to unbelievers. We should be the scientists creating great things. And I believe the Lord will help us. Johnny Erickson Tada. At the age of 17, I had complete paralysis of both arms and legs. It was almost, she was thinking of committing suicide. But she did not allow that to stop her. She learned how to paint with a brush between her teeth. She visited 47 countries, and she has written over 50 books. Somebody having complete paralysis of both hands and legs have done that. What have you done? As we conclude, I'll just say these three things, and we'll pray. You can never be stopped until you stop yourself. You can never be stopped until you stop yourself. When you stop yourself, that's when you stop. Nancy Mandela says, a winner is a dreamer who never gives up. And I will say, you are as big as your dream. Let's pray and ask God for grace. Let's rise up and talk to God that God should give us grace. If you have been discouraged, pray that God will encourage you. The Lord will help you to dream again. Maybe you'll be the next person. Your startup, maybe the startup will be hearing about in the next two, three, four, five years. But you have to start from somewhere. Pray that God will help you. That the discouragement of the past will be gone. And that God will give you grace. Our Father and our God will thank you once again for encouraging us that we can dream again. Lord, we pray that Father, the courage we need, the inner strength to dream, and every grace we need to achieve our dreams, Give unto us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.